Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Anything Blows. My name is Andrew Deacon. and today I'm proud to be joined by Giorgio Isaiah. Giorgio, how are you, my man? I'm very good. Just finished my session. And uh, yeah, looking forward for the finals. And how long have you had in camp for your September 7th bout? Uh, about eight weeks. Yeah, so I've just been training for eight weeks. And uh, yeah, we're finally here. And it's a cliche question to ask, but would you say this is your best professional camp you've ever had and the best camp of your pro career? Uh, yeah, definitely the best one, the the toughest one. And uh, yeah, just, you know, each camp is, uh, you know, I start is better and better. You know, I find more more stuff about myself. I learn more. You know, I'm getting fitter, stronger, you know, more, more mature as well. So, yeah, it's the best one so far. I love that. And Jojo, when did you dye your hair red? Because you're matching a shirt, but when did you have to change of colour? <laughs> I done it a couple of days ago. Not not my not, not much long time ago. It's just nice and fresh now. Yeah. Got my trim the other day. Yeah, got um, got a slightly different uh, colour on the kid now. So I jumped on uh, on red with uh, with uh, with black as well. And uh, yeah, just uh, just uh, try new stuff, isn't it? I love it. Maybe one day I need to try, but I think my hair's too black, too dark. Maybe, maybe, maybe you one never, day. Yeah, never know. Just try, see how it is. Yeah, should try. Um, so then let's go back a little bit. Where did the desire come from to get into boxing and to become a pro boxer? Just, uh, just random, really. You know, like I used to do football when I was kids. Like I was, I was playing for a good team. It's cool when, uh, when I just quit. You know, I just find, uh, find different addictions. You know, like you know, I was with the young, young life, drugs, alcohol, and all this. So, just stopped. You know, and um, yeah, once, once I turned seventeen, no, actually, no, nineteen, actually, when I turned nineteen, um. You know, I just say, you know, where I'm going with this life, you know, just doing nothing all day, just smoking and drinking and having a bad lifestyle. And um, I always wanted to go back in sport, but I never wanted to start football again because, you know, starting from scratch again, but something you used to be good would be quite tough mentally. So I was just thinking, what's, what should I do, you know? And uh, yeah, I just start boxing. I said, you know what, I'll push myself to boxing. Why not? And uh, I just started like that, you know, you know, like day one, brick by brick, just building up the skills learning, learning, there we go today, you know, about uh, almost four years later, so we're, we're pro. I love that. And talk about that there. What team did you play for? And are you a big football fan? Um, not a big football fan anymore. I used to play for, for a team in my city, uh, one of the biggest teams in my city, you know, like for juniors. Um, and I played for a year over there. It's called uh, Lepese Suchavo, right? And um, yeah, I played there, but... It didn't work well, you know, like, as I say, I just got addicted to other stuff and quit. But, uh, yeah, then I, I still watch, I was watching football for, for a bit. But, yeah, it just, it's gone now. Mm. And I've known, well, I know a lot more, but last two teams where Sam have played, we've played Bucharest in a conference league and we've also played Astra Giri, if you're familiar with those two clubs. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, so uh, the Bucharest one is uh, called Stella, right? That yeah. was my, uh, my favourite team. Um, yeah. all time you know like I was supporting them since day one since I started working you know yeah, yeah it's a good team you know they they, they won the the Champions Leagues uh, I'm not wrong 80, no 92 or something like that yeah. ago. So I wasn't even born at the time yeah because my dad said as well obviously being from Albania I understand the culture he said Bucharest was one of the best teams Partizan was one of the best teams the, the yeah, culture yeah. there the football was different and yeah it, they, they were in that era as well. and they still are now and like I said when you were growing up Romania 2002-2004 was unreal so yeah 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 even like when Albania beat Romania for the first time, sorry, but it's like, ugh, it's, Romania's a good team. They've been semi-finals of the World Cup, for me if I'm wrong, if not the Euros. And uh, Albania, we had a chance and we made history that night. But like, we understand it. We understand the passion. So let's go on to that now. What boxers did you lock up to? And who'd you say, oh, would it be like Mike Tyson, Muhammad Ali? Or did you have a different mindset? You just wanted to do it for yourself? Do you know what? I don't look, I don't look, I look a lot of boxers. You know, I like, I like a lot of boxers from, from the past, active, you know, I look to too many, but I never want to be like someone, you know, particularly. Mm. I want to be myself, you know. Like, I probably pick up stuff from X boxer to, to X, a little bit of movements or uh, design of the kit or whatever. But I want to be myself, you know, my own version, my own boxer, you know. But I do yeah. look up uh, Giovanni Davis. He's my, my favorite. Oof. I really like I him. Tank's unreal. And and do you take any skills from Tank and any movements? 
the mo- uh, do you know, I try to to get the movements of um, like the the way he reloads um, the punches to get the power. Do you know, I li- I like how he's um he's getting so much power from uh from the ground. Do you know, for for such a small guy division. Do you know, mm. uh, yeah. But do you know, skills you always pick up at the gym most likely. But when you see something, you just try to 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 get it the same. Do you know, like for example, like Giovanni uppercuts. I try to you know get something about them. So yeah, and but. let's talk about that there because I say that to everyone, and everyone says I want to be the next Conor McGregor. I want to be like Muhammad Ali, Mike Tyson. They compare, let's like, say, in football, Ronaldo and Messi. But at yep, the end yep. of the day, and I say this to everyone, um, you you make your own name because Ronaldo, Messi, Muhammad Ali, Mike Tyson, the names weren't born there. They, they weren't. Perception. Yeah, they they yeah. created their own name before even Pele's Maradona's. You can't. Pele wasn't. Yeah, a superstar. And again, you, people say that, oh, okay, Messi was born of it. No, they, they turn themselves into these people. And at the end of the day, everyone's a normal human being. Everyone has has not only a mindset, but everyone has their own name and their own style. Because you could say you want to be like Conor McGregor or Muhammad Ali or Mike Tyson, but it's not going to work. You have to be your own self because, again, ultimately, at the end of the day, if you copy someone's style too much, you can look up to someone, but if you copy their style too much, I don't think you lose it. It's with people. Yeah, well. people you lose yeah. the authenticity, isn't it? And people realise uh, you're not original. And yeah, 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 you're right. You know, that's, as, a, as I say, you know, I like to be my own version, you know, and... Uh, yeah, see where we're going with, you know, how far we can go. What's the limit? I love that. And before we get on to your pro career, what's your amateur record and amateur achievements? Um, I had 20, 20 amateur fights. I won 18 and I lost two. And um, yeah, I, I, won, uh, I won a couple of uh, couple of uh, titles. I won uh, two box cups. I won the Nas- National Novice Championships, the ABAs. And I went finalist in uh, in an uh, international tournament in Spain. So to be honest, in such such a short time, uh, I won most likely everything. You know, I only been amateur for for a season and a half, so a year and a half. So no. quick amateur career, but very active. You know, I I try to to be in every single show, uh, always ready, always on weights, always fit. And uh, it paid off, you know, all them nights in the gym, late and early ones. And yeah. And do you feel like this was uh, last year in November, you made your professional debut? Do you feel like that was the perfect time to turn over? Or did you want to do more in the amateurs? Or were you happy with the time you turned over? Yeah, do you know, I was I was happy with uh, with amateur. You know? Like that's how obviously we decided to turn over. You know, like that was um, 50% of my choice to turn over because I felt good. I, I was happy with uh, what I achieved. And uh, yeah, but obviously when I turned over, I was I was twenty two, and um, yeah, it's not the best age, but it's not the the worst age. You know, it's just fine. You know, it's it's uh, it's perfect. You know, obviously a lot of folks they turn over at eighteen, nineteen, or even younger in other countries. Some of them they turn older, you know, and they they still have time to achieve stuff. But I always had something in my mind thinking, um, I don't want to get too old by the time I turn over because I want to have a, a long career. To, to have time to achieve everything I want, you know, to to achieve my goals. So yeah, I was I was yeah pretty much happy with uh, with that. You know? Love that. And now let's go on to your professional debut against Jordan Grenham last November. You fought one of the most experienced and one of the best journeymen in the country. How's that about? Yeah, it was good. Uh, you know, I was I was happy to to have Jordan in my uh, in my debut. You know, I respect him. Uh, I I knew about him before to turn over. You know, like one of my mates fought him some while ago, and I always had respect for him. You know, and uh, it's a great gentleman, it's a great boxer, and great person. You know, and mm-hmm. um, I done really good against him. You know, I had the slick movements, uh, I was in, in calm and controlled. So yeah, I was really happy after my debut with uh, with the experience and with the, with the um, you know with the with the skills. And then we go on to your second contest, another one of the best journeymen, another one of a great guy in the country, Stella Arrowsmith. Yeah, same with him as well. You know, like I, I was happy to to have um, another great gentleman who been in the ring many, many times and had all, all the graphs in, in, in the ring, right? So he gave me a good uh, movement around then. Yeah, I done the same again. I was happy with my experience. I looked way sharper on, on the debut. Uh, slick as well. I still kept that movement, that you know, angles. So yeah, it just it just get better, you know, from the first to the second one. 
Uh, let's go on to your first professional contest now, and the one where you got your first knockout, such so TK Lucky Benoit. How was that contest? And a uh, guy of a winning record. Yeah, yeah, that was good, you know. <laughs> like obviously being in the camp and knowing we're gonna fight someone with winning records, um, we had a little bit of extra hunger to train harder, to train more, to and a, a bit more buzz for for it, you know, like more excitement. And uh, yeah, you know, we've been working on the power shots, we've been working on the movements. And uh, stepped in the ring, felt very comfortable. Every single power uh, power shot I was landing, I created damage, and uh, I was happy with it. You know, and uh, sec second round, then it's all over. And then uh, just, now, uh, yeah, just, oh. uh, sorry, just a little bit nice with the stoppage, you know, because um, it it didn't look like he he wasn't able to to continue no more. He he was looking right, but he stopped, and it is always I expect the decision of the ref, but I think he could go a little bit more. Mm. And now, correct me if I'm wrong, the Fonz Alexander about is it still four rounds or is it moving right, up to six? That... Sorry? Is the next fight six round or is it a four round contest? A six rounder, yeah, yeah. So that's my first six rounds mm -hmm. um, uh, fight. And, and and what have you done in camp and what have you changed in preparation? Or have you always been fit to go the uh, not only the distance, six rounds or less, of course, but what have you done and emulated different? Because you're going into the later rounds now and not say that you haven't been in a fight, at least not in your pro career, but sparring, sparring and, and, and the pro fight's different. So what have you done different to, to this one? Have you just stayed the same? Well, so I've always been a fit person, you know, because I've always been in the gym, you know, even in camp or not in camp, I've always been training. So... My fitness has always been uh, been right. We just obviously increased the spying. Um, you know, we, we start doing spying more often, more rounds. You know, with with quality uh, spying partners as well. And uh, yeah, obviously the fitness um, side will be extra. You know, more running, more miles. And uh, yeah, so everything been increased a bit on each side. On the technique, we've been working more as well to make sure we we know how to save the energy, how to sit on the shots. So yeah, it's been a it's been a slightly um, different camp, and uh, working on different stuffs. And yeah. Fonz Alexander, another great journeyman, another notable name in Britain. What do you make of him? And and as I said, these journeymen are tough, and they can put on whenever they want. But do you see this yeah. going six rounds, or do you see it being another knockout? Do you know what? I always always look at. I never looked for knockouts or for TK or something. I just look to to go there. To box, you know, show my skills because that's what all about as a prospect. Show your skills, you know, get better, improve your skills, and uh, yeah, have a picture of your fights after, so you know how to to change and what to change. But if it happens to to catch the good shots, you know, I'll be happy. But otherwise, I'll just um, I'll just stick to my boxing, and uh, yeah. And just, you're uh, a good and fighter. How does it feel being on good and shows? And like yeah, I said. It's good. I've I've heard a lot about you. Not only have I seen, but I've never seen you fight. But I always see the Romanian flags everywhere and the support you have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm happy with uh, with Goodwin. Uh, he's a uh, he's a great manager and great promoter as well. You know, and uh, I love to to box there. You know, it's like it's feeling great to be there. And uh, yeah, it's just it's beautiful. You know, and obviously, as you say, with the Romanian flags, I I love the support behind. You know, like obviously, I'm a nice person as well, so I deserve all the support. But when you see this kind of support, I'm just, you know, speak speechless. You know, it's 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 amazing to get such support. And it's amazing, as you said there, and not only the fighter you are, but the person you are. And talk about that because everyone says it, but for you, what what does it feel like? Not only now your fourth contest at your call, but your call's home for many of us, and it's home for many British boxers. Um, talk about your call, and like you said. The, not only the Romanian fans, but your fans always take over, and whoever fans are there, it's like a lion's den. Yeah, exactly. Do you know what? I love your call. Especially, I'm I'm uh, I'm living in East London, right? So for me, it's just around the corner. So on five days, I'm just walking down there. It's <laughs> great, you know. I feel like I'm just walking down my my other house, you know. And uh, yeah, it's very good, you know. Especially to all 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 the people who support me, they always say they they had a good time over there. It's a great venue, and it's just the 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 history behind it, you know. Uh, make it make it feel better when you're in inside there, you know, to see even the worst, you know, if you look at them, they look so vintage. And, and you know, you can think how many people been in that ring, how many people been in that venue to support or to, to box over there. So it's just great. You know, I, li I like your call. It's nice. And many start off as prospects and end up becoming champions. And as Steve Woodwin says, he makes some championships. He was impressed with Brad Paul's a few months yeah. ago, a few weeks ago. So Yeah, yeah, I wish that. 
Yeah, you watched that. Yeah, that was beautiful. You know, I was happy for him. You know, obviously, I don't know Brand uh, uh, in, uh, in person, but uh, it's just amazing. You know, to to see these achievements. You know, starting from a small hole as well. It's just mm-hmm. uh, giving hope for uh, the others. You know, we we start in a small hole. So yeah, great. And build the way. And also talk about that there. You're you're in a welterweight division, one of the most stacked divisions in the country, if not the world. Talk about it. What do you make of the welterweight division, not only in the UK but in the world? Because it is it's stacked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, it's a it's a it's a busy uh, division, isn't it? You know, a lot of great fighters. And uh, yeah, look forward to seeing uh, how we fit in this division. You know, because obviously before I fought it's uh, super welterweight. Now I'm going down to welterweight. So. I just like to, to see how is the feeling of it, you know, being a little bit underweight. Um, and I see uh, not only announcing you in the ring, but of course, uh, I, you can correct me if I'm wrong what they actually said, but the announcer says something to do with like, what uh, uh, amazing prospect, or you know when they announce you just before you're about to walk off, they, they give you a lot of praise. Not only it's just saying, well, wait, but they give you a lot of praise before you're yeah, about yeah, to Yeah, 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 yeah. I had that on my, um, not sure which fight, last one or two before, they were mm-hmm. saying um, one of the top uh, star prospects and all this. And man, when I when I was hearing that, I was feeling great. You know, I was feeling really good. You know, to, to I was I wasn't expecting that. You know, and I'm like, wow, that's a, that's great. You know, I was buzzing inside like a kid. You know? No, that's amazing, bro. And you deserve it. And talk about that. Like, there, have you ever been nervous for a fight, or is it everything natural to you? Do you know what? Funny, but I never never been. You know, even my first amateur fights. Never, you know, like I've never been a confident person, you know. Like even when I was playing football, I would, I would be nervous before, before uh, matches. But when I start boxing, I had so much confidence and so much belief in myself that all the nerves disappeared, you know. Like I was just in control all the time, and I always been uh, fascinated about that, you know. I'm like, where is this coming from, you know? Because I was, I never been like that, you know. I'm still, I'm still not confident in other stuff in life, you know. But when it's about boxing. I'm really confident, you know, and it's, it's great, you know. It's your element and you control it and you know what yeah. you're doing. Um, it's like you're at the steering wheel of it. And talk about that there. So we were talking about the World Trade Division. Obviously, in the UK, you've got fighters such as Conor Byrne, Florian Marku, Chris Congo, um, Elliot Whale and Lloyd Germain are fighting for the Commonwealth Silver yeah. this Saturday on the zone. What do you make of the names? And there's more titles available now. Do you want to go Southern Area, English, British, or, or what route are you looking? Yeah, of course, obviously, there's um, a great uh, names out there, right? But until we get to that point, still... Uh... Brick by brick, you know. So my next goal now, obviously, is uh, you know give this fight out the way in September. Then the next one, and then hopefully next year, looking for for Southern Area. So I'm just looking for small goals at the moment. Obviously, everyone have a big goal, but you always look for the small one first. You know, look what's next, what's next, what's next, and then you get to the big one. I love that. And you, you like you're saying with your style before when you go into fights, everyone says it, but it's it's the best way to do it because you're not looking for the knockout, you just look to box and you're living in the moment. You're not all looking ahead. You you you're, you're yeah, yeah. in your in the moment. I, I learned that from, from own experience as an amateur, you know. You know, I had many fights when I stepped inside the ring and I just wanted to knock him out, you know. Like that was me in my mind. I'm like, you know, I want to knock him out. He'd been cocky to me before, whatever. And uh it never happened, you know, because you're focused too much on that thing. You know, you leave your expo- yourself exposed and, uh, yeah, just use it too much energy after, you know, relax no more, you know, and control. But when you just go there, box, you flew it, you, you know, you flow around and all of a sudden, bang, it's coming. And, you know? and so, as they say, a calm fighter is a dangerous fighter. Yeah, exactly. You know? So, yeah, yeah that's, that's the, the way we look at it. So, after yeah. this contest, not to overlook your opponent, but after this contest and you get the win, would you like to be out once more, or twice more before the end of the year, or will it? Yeah, just be, I'll, um, yeah, I'll I'll be out in December. I'm not sure what, what date it is, but I'm, mm-hmm. uh, I look to get out in December again. So finish the year with five and zero, and then uh, we're looking for the next year. Then, but, I love uh, that. For us. And, yeah. and you talk about it there. Dan Francis versus Alfie Winter is the next Southern Area clash for the World Weight title. Who do you see winning that? Um, I don't know none of them to be honest. Uh, well, I just hope the best the best one win. 
Mm. You know, I, I wish nothing but best for for both of them. But um, I don't know them. Um, uh, the names. I don't really look much to be honest. Like being honest with you, I don't really look much at boxing at the moment. Mm. You know, I focus too much on myself. I don't know what's going on around there. You know, so you know, we'll we'll be the time when we're looking for others. But for now, we're just looking for us and uh, how to improve, and that's it. And Giorgio, just for let you go, because I like asking everyone, listen, you talk about focus on yourself because it, it avoids distraction. It's like football or boxing, any sport in the world. You're concentrated on yourself. You're concentrated on making yourself the best fighter possible. And you're not looking at your opposition or your team. You're looking to make you the best person in the world. And obviously, that, yes. that's the journey. That's your journey and that's your mindset. So talk about this. Say we put boxing away or, or even boxing included. Who's Georgia as Isaiah as a person? And if I was to come up to you in a street or just talk to your beer view for like a week, what type of person are you and what do you like to do in a spare time? Well, type of person. Yeah, it's uh, it's funny because so this kind of person is uh, um, it's changed now. So I'm just a, just a chill guy, you know. I'm just chill. And uh, yeah, if you see me in the street, you'll just feel like I oh, got this chill guy. It's nothing to do, you know. But no, I like to spend, uh, spend my, my, my spare time just uh, seeing my friends going out, chill, you know. Have a sleepover, have some movies or something. I just, you know, like sometimes I, I think to myself, I'm like, man, I'm just getting old. I just, I just don't want to do too much, you know. I just want to chill, and that's it. Probably it's because of you know I'm being too busy in day life with everything. Um, yeah, my spare time is just uh, quiet, just chilling, you know. Uh, um, yeah. Those. That's one of my questions. You mentioned movies there, so I'm gonna. I have a quick fire or take your time on them. What's your favorite movie of all time? What's your favorite TV series? And what's your favorite song of all time? Oh, man. <laughs> favorite movie? That's 300 the Spartans. That's mm. 100%. You know, I remember I used to, to watch that with my, my, my bigger brother when we used to be kids every single weekend. The same one over and over again, like for 300 times, you know, we'll be watching that. We never get bored. You know, and uh, that's why I've got a, I've got a tattoo man, with uh, with the Spartan as well because uh, oh, I grew up with that movie. So that's that's best one. Now TV series, I don't know to be honest because I don't really don't really watch series. You know, if if I can say the Punisher, I don't know if you heard about it. it's a Marvel um, uh, series. Oh, I might um, have seen like the posters of the comics, but no, I never really. Yeah, watched yeah, it. yeah. So the, the Punisher that, that was cool. You know, it's like with a with a main character who is um. We're just fighting everyone for different reasons, you know. And, uh, yeah, but I don't really watch series, so I don't know what to say here. And, uh, yeah, what was the last, last question? Song. You, you don't have to just say one, but genre of music or, or what songs so, you like. Uh, same, man. I'm just too wild with this. I listen to too much music. I like DMX, <laughs> you know, like DMX, Tupac, all this old school I grew up with. Mm. Um, they always uh, stay with me, you know. I always listen to them. Uh, Biggest Smalls, you know, uh, Snoop Dogg. I like them. Easy, uh, but I can't pick a favorite one because you know it's always change. You always listen to one music for a couple of days, you see favorite, but then all of a sudden next week you listen to something else. Um, so I have a favorite one. I have favorite artists. I say. Oh, talk about that there. Who's your favorite actors and actresses? Actors. Uh, no man. Uh, I'm bad at names. Do you know. Um, do you know. I like um I forgot what's his name in real life, but he used to be a wrestler, uh Batista. Oh. Oh, okay. You, you definitely know him, right? The yeah, big of course. Cool so I like him as an actor, you know. I, I watch some some movies with him. He's actually cool, you know. He's always yeah. playing the the bad boy role or the funny guy. You know, and uh, yeah, I like yeah. that. But I don't know, man, I can't think of uh, actors to be honest. But also yeah. but no, that's all right. Before I let you go, what's your walkout song on the night when you walk out? I don't know. <laughs> you don't know. I don't know, man. Uh, I didn't think about it, to be honest. I had a couple of on my uh, on my mind, but I just uh, yeah, I just gonna leave it for for whenever I get asked to to pick up a song, and I just uh, I just pick up straight away random. But definitely, probably it's gonna be like some old old school stuff. Uh, now I'm just thinking about the mood. If I'm going with uh, rap music or with a banger or with some funk one or whatever. And, <laughs> no, I love that, and it's just the moments, whatever you're feeling in in the moment. Whatever I feel, you know, like obviously, if I start thinking uh, five weeks before, that's gonna be more workout music. Well, maybe I'm not feeling the same no more after a couple of weeks, and I'll be like, you know what, I don't feel that music no more. So I just wanna, I wanna pick out something what make me feel, you know, I'm ready, you know, give me a little bit of um, ghost bumps. Yeah, pumped um, up in the moment, and and also talk about that last, there because. Last time I had, um, 
No, you're good. Sorry, my bad. Was that? No, no, it cut no, out I was, a little bit. I always want to say um last time last time I had um ZMX uh, intro. Do you know mm. it's that original which uh, uh what's his name? Uh, Mike Tyson worked out with. Yeah, that was felt great. Oh, that's the best. Really good. That, that's unreal. Uh, tough music. Mm. Yeah, yeah. One, two, one, two, count two. That was good. Do you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, and yeah. talk about it because I see it similar. in. Oh, sorry, the, it keeps cutting out a little bit. Sorry. That probably yeah, is the it's... signal. I'm uh, I'm outside as well. Oh, okay. No, no, finish, finish, Con continue. It's alright. That's yeah. Uh, we'll finish. Yeah, yeah. Want to say nothing? I just was. Yeah. You were you was wanted to to ask me something. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry, because it kept cutting out a little bit. And it's when I thought I got you back. It just went against. So talk about that. There. I saw you behind the scenes. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is it the British flag and the Romanian flag you have in your locker room, right? Uh, I had the uh, Romanian and English. English. And yeah. talk about the importance of having not only your people, but also your culture and, and everyone here as well that supports you. Because, like you said, a, a prospect, a big star in the world with the vision. Yeah, obviously, you know, I'm, I'm always representing the Romania flag because that's where I'm coming from. You know, that's my roots. I grew up over there. You know, I respect my country. I love my country. But at the same time, I wanted to always have, uh, have the English flag with me because this is the country where... It changed my life, you know, it gave me up from the people from here, you know, so I just want to show respect back to you know, and be 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 proud to be in this country and being, you know, uh, representing half, halfway kind of, you know, so it's just, yeah, just love both fans. It's just a way of showing um, brotherhood, you know, Romanians to, to English people, you know, which is, you know, I think it is, you know, like it's full of Romanians here and most likely everyone say good stuff about us uh, in general, so, yeah. Yeah, and I have Romanian neighbors. So every time they make a barbecue, they give us like they food invite and stuff. you over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we do, man. We do. So uh, literally, I was having a barbecue uh, a couple of weeks ago. I think three, four weeks ago with, with my mates uh, at my house, and uh, we invite all the neighbors. You know, and some of them they came, some of them they didn't. But when they came, they just they were was happy. You know, they, they were surprised to be like, oh wow, man, you invite me to to your barbecue. I'm like, of course, you know, you're my neighbor. You know, I live here. You know, we 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 share when we can. You know, if 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 I can have something to eat why not to eat from a plate as well you know i, I love that and that, that's the mindset and that's helping and that's about the community and the spirit and yeah and right, it's, it's about the community but at the same time you know everyone is working for themselves everyone is on their own lane of life but you know never forget you know the community you know because everyone is in the same same country same bowl same planet you know like be nice it's not about being nice you know because you see these days how much hate is everywhere uh, you know, fights and all this between X and X and what for, man? You know, everyone is having the same goal to live a life. Just live it together, man. Like, never understands, you know. I love um, that, bro, and that's the mentality and that's what I love about you proudly representing the Romanian, the English and the world of raising it on the stage because people see you and, and they see not only the fighter in the ring, but when they get to see these interviews, they get to see who you are as a person. So before I let you go, exactly. um, for those that don't know you, talk about America, talk about Italy, talk about Germany, around the world, describe your fighting style. And for those who have seen you, obviously they'll know, but describe your fighting style to the world. Describe your style. Um, slick, first of everything. You know, I move a lot. I have a lot of anger, so it's slick, powerful. And uh, great to watch, you know, unexpected. It's always something. Oh, yeah. Could you repeat that? Because it cut out a little bit. Oh, it's got out. Yeah, I, I, mm. I think it does because the um, signal went off. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was just saying, um, yeah, my style is just unexpected. You know, I'm always slick with my movements. With my uh, anger changes, uh, the power, you know, the punch selection as well. It's very, very uh, diverse all the time. So it's just, uh, just an unexpected style, you know. Like I will never be surprised if people be um, uh, wow after a fight, you know, because I do work for for this. Uh, and does that um, depend on your opponent, or does that depend whatever George uh, Isaac comes well, it out? It can in be, it can be depending on the opponents. Obviously, it depend uh, depends what style of uh, they have, what how they move. But mostly I stick to my game plan. Don't care who is in front of me. I just do my stuff, you know. And uh, but yeah, it can it can be twenty percent of it because of the opponents. It can change, but 
it's just yeah, just all the repetition from the gym is gonna be there. You know, it doesn't matter what kind of fighter is, you know. But yeah. An ultimate question, just to let you go, Georgia. What is your one motivational message to the world for fans to block out the outside noise, block out the haters, block out the negativity, and follow and pursue their dreams? Be yourself and work hard. That's it. Nothing else. If you know these two things, it's all all you care. And sometimes put your head down and just don't listen to none. You know, because no, no, if you listen to someone, you're never gonna go where you want. You know, you have to listen to to yourself. Because uh, no one knows better than you, isn't it? Yeah, uh, tunnel vision. And I saw yeah. a post on Instagram a few days ago. It said, if you listen to the opinions of others, you're not living your life. Yeah, you live their life, isn't it? You know, yeah. like, never, never listen to no one. You know, do your stuff. Do your, you know, do whatever you like. You like to go there, go there. It doesn't matter, you know. Just do that. Do you know like, how many people say, don't don't paint your hair red, you know? And no, I mean, love it, bro. It's, is, it's amazing. Because I listen to myself, isn't it? Or, or what should I listen to someone? Do you know? <laughs> yeah, I love yeah. that. And you're, it's not not only authentic, not only original, but it's just being yourself. And like I said, you're matching a red shirt. So maybe red gloves on That's fight it, Yeah, go, go to the top. Go to the top as well. And uh waiting for my kid now. She'll be coming anytime soon. Any, any day now. I can't oh. wait, man. It looks it looks like from movie. You know? And you're gonna get all those yeah, photography that's... pics and the behind the scenes done well. So just before I let you go, what's your final message to your fans, everyone that's bought tickets, everyone that's gonna be watching, and everyone that's um uh bought your merch and all your sponsors, and what's your final message ahead of Fonz Alexander and how do you think the fight goes? Well, all I can say is just thanking to to everyone, to everyone who bought tickets, who supports me. Uh, just want to say a big thank you and all appreciated, all love for, for everyone, you know, for my sponsors, for people who support me, for my team, coaches, to to everyone, to my manager, promoter. And uh, yeah, just look forward for the fight and uh, yeah, see how it's going, you know, just going to have a good movement around and uh, uh, put some challenges in there. So, yeah. And God willing, 4 and 0 on September the 7th. George Isaiah, That's it's it. been great to finally have you on the channel. It's been a long time oh, coming. Thanks for having me as well. That was, that was, that was wicked to, to tell you. Thank you, bro. Uh, and September the 7th, it's going to be 4 and 0. God willing, 4 and 0 with two KOs. But if not, it's definitely going to turn 4 and 0 and you can carry your undefeated record. Thank you, my brother. And maybe one day I'll turn my hair red like you. <laughs> I think it's froze again. <laughs> yeah, it's gone. Can you hear me? Yeah, I yeah. I thought it froze again. Off. No, honestly, it's all right. It's both our connections. So four and no God willing on a night, September 7th. Ah, uh, it's beautiful. Oh, I love yeah. that. Thank you, bro. God bless. That's it. All right, then. Beautiful. Thank you for having me again. I appreciate that.